Okay, so this example will give you some more details as well as some explanation about the previous equations about the new network. And this is a very simple new network. We call this is a two, two, two new network. The first two, it means that we only have two input x1 and x2. The second two, it means that we have two hidden nodes in the hidden layers. The third two, it means that we have two outputs, z1 and z2. So when you look at the structure of this 222 new network, in between the input layers and hidden layer, we have all the connection right here. So we call this as the fully connected new network, as well as the hidden layer and output layer. They are fully connected as well. That means all the input will have a link connected to the hidden layer, or the hidden layer will have a link connected to the output layer. So if we are going to follow the blue line, for example, so we have a link from x1 to the hidden node 1. So we call this is w11, that is the connection weight. It is a value. Yeah, we are going to determine, for example, this one may be 0 0.2. Yeah, so w1, the first one, it means that this is connected to the first hidden node. And then the second one right here, it means that it connected to the first input x1. So the same idea applies to W12, the first one, that is, it connects to the first hidden node, the two in here, that is, it connects, it, it is connected to the second input, X2. So the same idea applies to the orange line, for example. So M11, it means that this, this one, it means that it connects to the output node one, this, this, uh, sorry, this uh, one, the first one, it means that it connects to the first output, Z1, and then the second one, it means that it connects to the first hidden node, Y1, and so on, yeah? So you can just, for example, pick a, a look right here. This two, it means that it connects to the second output, zero. It means that it connects to the bias, yeah? Okay, uh, now take a look at this one, instead of in the previous slide, I'm going to, I, I use WJI, and then, so this is WKJ. If we are going to use diff two different symbol, and then, so we can tell which W is for which layer, but when we are going to specify the value of JI and KJ, and then this value will cause some confusion. For example, this is one one, this is one one as well. So instead of using W in the second, in in the layer between hidden layer and output layer, I'm going to use M right here just to tell the connection weight in which layer. Yeah. Okay. And now, once we have this topology, we are going to take a look. How do we construct the equation? Just to recall that in this hidden node uh, right here, and then to break it down, zoom into that, we have the leg J as well as the activation function F. And then so so that this f that is the f right here. Now we have x1, x2. Follow the blue line. Yeah. So we have x1 times w11, x2 times w12, and one times w10. That is this equation. That is this expression because all of them it goes to the first hidden node y1. So y1 that is calculated by this equation. So this y1, that is the point right here. And then in between, this is the let right here. So let one, that is this linear combination of w and x. And then this f, that is this f right here. We do the same for y2. Yeah. So y2, we can just simply write it down as w12 times w1. Uh, sorry, I mean W21 times X1 and then W222 times X2 and W20 times the bias. And then passing through the activation function, we compute Y2 and so on. The same idea applied to the hidden layer and the output layer. Say Z1, that is, we compute the let as well. So Y1 times M11, Y2 times m12 
that is we have these two terms and one times m one zero we have z one that is the first output we can do the same for z two using the value of m two one m two two m two zero yeah and now we are able to determine the value of y1 and y2 according to x1 and x2 and then once we know what value of y1 and y2 they are and then so we are able to compute z1 and z2 yeah so the value propagate from layer to layer to the output and now we are going to put it into a matrix form yeah so we just simply put all this value together y1 y2 put it in a vector right here y1 y2 they are the value in the hidden layer and then so break it down into the matrix form so we have w11 here times w1 we reconstruct this term w12 times x2 we reconstruct this term and then plus one zero so this vector times this vector plus w10 we reconstruct y12 and then the same applies to y2 so y the, the bold face y that is y1 y2 two elements and then apply the function to wji x plus bold face wj0 that is defined right here yeah and then this is the compact form in matrix form of y1 y2 that is the output of the hidden layer we are going to do the same for the output layer yeah so using m value and y value we can just simply construct z1 that is m11 m12 times y1 y2 plus m10 and then we call this matrix to be capital letter w kj yeah so in both phase to indicate that that is a matrix and then y that is given right here that means once we know what input it is x1 x2 value as well as all w11 to w22 values and w10 w20 we can compute this capital letter y once we know why it is plug it into this position and then multiply WKJ that is the connection weight right here plus the bias and then that is the value of Z yeah so this is the idea about uh, this compact form of equation represent that representing the input output equation of this new network yeah again this F that is the F in the hidden layer they are not necessary to be the same as the output activation function yeah so it is your choice to choose which activation function we are going to use yeah and now once we have y and then plug this y into the z function into the z equation that is plug it into it we are going to represent z into this fun final form it consists of all these matrices yeah wkj and then wji as well as the input x and the bias matrices as well yeah so this is the input output equation for this new network yeah okay and now i'm going to talk a little bit more about this network structure or the network topology yeah in the previous example and uh, as i mentioned that we can choose whatever function as the activation function but in reality and then what function we are going to choose and then how this function is going to affect the approximation capability yeah for example if we are going to choose a two layer neural network with two input x1 x2 yeah in this example i do not include the bias but actually we we should have the bias for this new network and then if we are going to have a linear function in this hidden node, uh, in this output node, and then we can only construct a linear line right here, the linear boundary. So we separate this space into R1 and R2, yeah? So it is not very complicated, but when we have a classification problem like this, R2, the second class, and then R1, 
right here. If we are going to construct this complicated nonlinear function, a two-layer neural network does not work. We have to use a few like three layers neural network at least. But whether we are able to construct this nonlinear boundary, it depends on a lot of things. The number of hidden nodes, the actuation function we are going to choose, as well as the connection weight in different layer. So that means once we choose the network topology, it doesn't mean that we are able to solve all the problems. We need to choose the right topology with the right activation functions, with the right value of W, so that we can construct the boundary we want. Yeah. How to do that? That is based on the learning algorithm. That is the network propagation algorithm. We are going to investigate in the next um, section.